What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm back with a new SBS review for you guys and the game we're going to be talking about today is this guy right here, Xenogears. Now Xenogears released in 1998 on PS1 as you can see by Squaresoft. This was when they were partnered with EA to release their games in the United States. They didn't have that partnership for long. I think it ran through Xenogears, Final Fantasy VIII, like all the games that came out around that time. So I think like Brave Friends of Musashi, Parasite Eve, Bushido Blade, Bushido Blade 2, those games. But that partnership didn't last long. It was kind of weird. Right after that was when Square acquired Enix and it became Square Enix. And that's the way it's been ever since. Anyway. I'm going to talk about, as usual, the sound, the battle system, and the story for Xenogears. And I'm going to talk about a lot of other things about this game too because as much as I like it, there's a lot of stuff that I don't like and a lot of stuff that needs to be talked about. So let's go ahead and get started. And by the end, I don't think that I will discourage you from playing Xenogears because it's an absolute classic and I think every JRPG fan should experience this game. But there are some things you need to be aware of before you jump in. So, let's get started. So the battle theme for this game is called Stage of Death. And the theme itself doesn't elicit any feelings of like fear or danger or it doesn't make me feel powerful or unbeatable or anything like that. It's just a fucking banger. <laughs> it's a really good song. One of those songs where you end up subconsciously bopping to it while it's playing. It's a lot of fun to listen to. It makes battles enjoyable as well, which is a good thing. And it's just a really great song, a banger. I'm gonna let it play for a little bit so you can experience that. All right. <laughs> so the boss theme is called Night of Fire and Night as in King Arthur, not, it's not outside. And to be absolutely honest with you guys, this is probably for me, the second best boss theme in existence, period. I think there is only one boss theme better than this theme in the entire human world. And it belongs to Final Fantasy VI in case you were wondering. This theme, always gave me a, a sense of power and a sense of control. I've never felt fear while playing or fighting a boss. I've never felt like a situation was out of hand. I never felt like I was out of the fight, even though I was. A lot of times I was out of the fight, but the music always made me feel like I can't clutch it out. And this song is just, again, an absolute banger. So much fun to listen to. And I really like the way it makes me feel while it's playing. So we'll listen to it for a bit. All those head nods are off beat, I don't care. Next we have the world map theme. It is a very serviceable world map theme. It's not great, it's not bad, but it does give you that sense of adventure the sense of let me wander around and see what's going on here kind of thing. But I wouldn't call it a banger. Wouldn't call it bad though. And I probably won't let it run. I'll probably just cut this off because it's not really much to listen to. All right, so the battle system. The battle system in Zeno Gears takes place in two different phases. You have your human phase where you're just fighting, just the people fighting, Faye, Sight, and Ellie, throwing hands. And then you have gear battles where you fight in your giant robots. So let me discuss human battles first because there's elements of that battles or those battles that bleed into the gear battles. The wrinkle of this battle system is what's called death blows. And death blows are combos that you initiate by entering button combinations. So for example, like one common death blow is triangle, triangle X, I believe. And then that initiates a death blow. Triangle doesn't move, triangle doesn't move. And then when you hit the third button, that initiates the death blow and they do the special animation combo thing. Now, that sounds really, really cool. And they are cool for a bit. But then you realize there's 13 of these things, they get really long. For example, 
triangle, 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 X. Triangle, 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 triangle. And then when you hit X, then the death blow comes. But the deeper in the death blow list you get, the longer the death blow animations become. Meaning, across your three characters, battles can kind of start dragging out. That gets a little annoying at times, especially when you're grinding and you just want to blow through stuff. Or if you're in a dungeon and you're tired of being there and you're just trying to blow through these battles, death blows can make things pretty long. Couple that with the fact that if you try to avoid death blows, your attacks will either be underpowered, or if you do stronger, medium, and hard attacks, the hit rate goes way down. A lot of times your X attacks will miss. So it's more reliable to do death blows, but death blows make the battles longer. Now your death blows, now your death blows carry over to gear battles. So when you learn a death blow as a human, you get it as a gear, which is pretty cool. You don't have to learn two different sets of moves. The thing about gear battles, however, is that your gears use fuel for every action they take. Healing HP requires fuel. Attacking requires fuel. Using special item or special moves like magic attacks or anything like that. Well, magic attacks don't require fuel, but skills require fuel. So, what's bad about that is there is no way to massively restore your fuel in battle. You can only do it 30 units at a time, but your attacks, light is 10 units, medium is 20 units, heavy is 30 units. You restore one heavy attack per turn when you try to refuel your fuel. And if you run out of fuel, you can't act. You just stand there. A uh, thing that exasperates this problem is the game's high encounter rate. The game has a really high encounter rate. I'll get into it later, but I'm touching on it now because that goes into the frustration I feel with gear battles. And then another thing that exasperates it even further is that there are battle or dungeons that are purely gear dungeons. Whole dungeon, in your gear, and a boss at the end. You're fighting random battles the whole time with a high encounter rate with a resource you have to preserve because if you don't have it, you can't do anything. Now, there are, I will say that this is a problem more in the beginning of the game than the end of the game, but it's still something you have to be self-conscious of. You always have to make sure that you have enough fuel to do the things you need to do. Now, I say all that to say that I don't think the battle system in and of itself is bad. I just think the battle system is a sign of its time. It didn't age well. It was something that even when I was younger, I thought death blows were fucking dope. They were so cool. And I didn't really care. Like, I I didn't manage my fuel when I was younger. Like, I didn't manage any resource when I was a kid in RPGs. Who does that? It's something to be aware of, something to prepare for as well. There's a lot of times where you do an event, you move on to the next event, but the game doesn't do that thing where it replenishes your stats or replenishes your HP or anything. So there's uh, there's times where you're, you do gear stuff and then you're out of your gear and then you're doing human stuff and then you have to jump back into your gear and nothing is replenished. Your fuel and your HP aren't replenished. There's times where if you're not careful, you'll get caught out with little to no fuel, little to no HP in your gears and that pretty much makes it impossible to complete the task at hand. So always manage those resources before you go out to do anything. So the story of, the story of Zeno Gears is where I think the game truly, truly shines. And I honestly believe that this is one of the best narratives in JRPGs still to this day. As usual, I'm not gonna spoil anything. I'm not gonna get deep into it, but I will tell you this, the game, Starts out with that guy right there, Faye, main character. He lives in the village of Lahan, and he's lived there for three years, and he has no memories of him, or he has no memories before he lived there. So one night before the wedding of his two best friends, Gears make an emergency landing in his village, and a battle starts. Faye decides to jump into a gear and take part in the battle. 
Next thing he knows, he's a, he wakes up, it's the next day, he's outside of a destroyed Lahan village and all of the villagers hate him. He destroyed the village. Because of this, he sets out on a quest and from there, he gets wrapped up in, he gets wrapped up with Bart and his rebellion and that just snowballs into you literally speaking to God. <laughs> like everything that happens in between that bro is so, so amazing. And the game is so much to dissect and so much to talk about with this game and its narrative that there are entire podcasts, videos, all types of stuff on YouTube completely devoted to the story of Xenogears. It is so heavy and it's so deep. There's so much to digest. With all that being said, it leads right into one of my frustrations with the story. So there's a lot of times where there are characters that are talking about people, places, events, whatever, and you have no idea what the fuck they're talking about. They're talking straight over your head. And they're, they drop hints throughout for some of these things and you can piece two and two together and you can get a pretty good solid, I'm 99.9% .9 sure that this is what you're talking about, but the game will not tell you for a very long time or there's some things and some characters that the game just completely forgets about. And there's there's just stuff that remains unanswered or unsaid or things that you don't find out about until you're like 40 to 50 hours deep in the game. Now, none of these things ruin the narrative or none of these things ruin the story. It's just something that's annoying and something that's frustrating about it because I want to be in on it too. I'm the player. I'm supposed to know what's happening in your story. And there are major characters and major events that are referred to multiple times by multiple characters. And they don't tell you what any of that shit is. But despite all that, it doesn't A, ruin the story. It just makes the story kind of harder to follow. And I think they did that as a way to make the game a little deeper. But I think the narrative impact would have been the same if he were in on a lot of the things that they were talking about. But it is what it is. Doesn't ruin the story. Doesn't make it any less impactful. Just makes it kind of frustrating and kind of makes you feel like you might know what's going on, but you might be wrong. And then if you're wrong, then the perception of your of the game could change for you or any it's it's just something I don't like. I don't like being left in the dark as a player. Leave the characters in the game in the dark, but let me know what's going on, bro. Like, I I just like to know. When you mention the contact, it would be nice to know who the contact is without having to play the game for 55 hours. And also, like I mentioned before in that little rant, there's one character in particular, his name is Rico. You have his whole little event when you recruit him and meet him. And then it's like, the game completely forgets about dude. Like, he had the potential to have one of the dopest backstories in the game. And they're just like, meh, who cares? And you play for like, maybe another 40 hours and you find out one more cool fact about Rico but it doesn't solidify anything for you. You still have to, you have to go outside the game to figure out Rico's backstory. And when you figure out Rico's backstory, you get bummed because the game should have fucking told you because it's cool. I don't like that. I want narratives where the characters are all involved, all invested the entire time. They just don't become White Knight Chronicles created characters that just hang out in the background and don't do shit. And that's what happens to Rico. I don't like that. But overall, like I said, this still remains one of the best stories in JRPGs. And I highly recommend experiencing this story 
I feel like it's required reading if you're a JRPG fan. Alright, so we got the sound, the battle system, and the story out of the way. Now it's time to talk about the other things that bother me about this game. And, who oh boy, one of them is huge. We'll build up to that one. Let's start with this. Like I mentioned before, the encounter rate is high. And when I say that, I mean the encounter rate is high as in you get into a battle, complete the battle, you don't run away. You complete the battle, you take a step, and you enter another battle. And you complete the battle, you win the battle, and you take another step, and you're in another battle. That is common. That happens multiple times throughout dungeons. And it's annoying when you couple it with the fact that death blows make battles longer than they need to be anyway. What exasperates that problem is the next problem, and that's with the dungeons themselves. The dungeons in this game are bad. They are not well designed and they look terrible. It's like they made one, one segment of the dungeon and then copy and pasted that shit throughout the entire thing. Every single corridor in every single dungeon looks the same. Every hall, you go down a hallway, you enter a door, it's a new hallway, it looks just like the hallway you walked out of. What makes this even worse is that there's no map. Absolutely no map whatsoever. You have a compass, which kind of helps, but the camera is free roam, rotates, 360 rotating camera which can throw off your compass if you're using that to navigate the dungeon. I There's a lot of times where I just, I turned off the game and sat it down and took small breaks throughout dungeons because I got so frustrated from getting lost, getting jumped all the time, and just expending resources trying to get through the thing. Another thing this game does, which I have absolutely no idea why, it's absolutely unnecessary, and if this game ever gets remastered, I hope they take it out. This game has platforming. Platforming in your JRPG. And it's not good platforming. And there's a couple of reasons for that. The first reason is that even though the camera moves, it's really hard to time your jumps in this game. You're gonna do a lot of falling and there's Certain dungeons Tower of Babel. that requires platforming throughout the entire thing, entire thing. And in this dungeon, you're going up. So if you miss a platform, you're going to fall all the way down to the bottom and you have to climb all the way back up. Now, couple that with the high encounter rate, the samey looking dungeons, and the long battles because of death blows, that shit gets real annoying real quick. And that's not even the worst part about the platforming. The worst part is this. So when you get into a battle in this game, it doesn't happen right away. Like if I remember this on the disc, it doesn't do this on emulation, but it does it on the disc. When you get into the battle, you hear the game load. <laughs> like you hear it. And then after it's loading the battle, and then after that you go into the battle. Well, while it's doing that little that little loading period, you can still move your character, but you can't jump. That that little loading thing or whatever it is eats the jump command. So if you're cruising along and you need to make a jump from platform to platform, and you get into battle before you jump, straight off the platform. The amount of times that shit happened to me, oh my god. So, the most egregious thing about this game is the entirety of this 2. The whole damn thing. And here's why. So, I'm not gonna go into like the behind the scenes of why this 2 ended up the way it is. There's a lot of videos on YouTube that explain 
what was going on internally at Square and what was going on with the development team at the time. I'm just going to talk about the product that they put out. So the biggest problem with this too is this. You don't experience the story anymore. The story is told to you. And I mean that literally. The majority of this too is a character, either Faye or Ellie, sitting in a chair like I'm sitting right now and they're telling you what happens. You don't play it, they tell it to you. And if there's a situation where there is a dungeon or a boss fight involved, you warp to that place, you go through the dungeons, which in this two are much shorter than they are in this one. That's good or bad, depending on how you feel about the dungeons in this game. And then you fight the boss and then you go right back to one of the characters sitting in a chair telling you what's going on and that's this too you don't explore unless you have to because the game says you have to or until the very end when you're going to the last dungeon to take care of all the shit then you can do that but the majority of this too is just them telling you the story of the the story of what is happening instead of you just being there and watching scenes and experiencing the story there's a couple scenes here and there, but again, you're not in a town. You're in a black, it's, it's a black room with a picture of where you're supposed to be. The character's still sitting in a chair and then the other character's talking, but you're still being told what's happening. You're not experiencing what's happening. Now, depending on who you are and how you feel about the game, that can be a giant, giant mark against it. I myself still hold the story and the narrative in very high regard because I think even with this two being the way it is, it doesn't ruin the story, but it severely hurts the game. One of my dreams, if I ever had affinity money, is I would find the Xenogears development team, tell them here's all the money, remake the game the way you wanted to make it the first time because the world needs that game this game will probably never be remastered it'll probably never be remade and this too is going to be the way it is forever but as it stands now if you just look at this too by itself this too is trash there's no other way to put it overall i think xenogears is still a very good game it's if I were to give it a number rating, I would probably give it a six and a half out of ten, a seven at most. And a lot of that has to do with the narrative of the game being so strong. I think the battle system in and of itself did not age well, especially the gear aspect of it. I think that annoying. I think that dungeons get annoying because they look so samey and the amount of platforming that's required in some of them. It just doesn't work but the story guys the story like i said before i think zeno gears is required reading for jrpg fans but the way you experience that is up to you whether that be you just want to play the game to say that you played the game or you want to sit through and watch a let's play of someone else playing it however you do it just make sure you experience the story of this game. Now, I myself personally, unless the game gets remade or remastered, like we're blessed with that event, I won't be playing this game ever again. I enjoyed the story, but I did not have fun, if that makes sense. The battles got tedious, that wore me out. The dungeon design wore me out. The platforming was not fun. I actually think, I said I wasn't going to talk you guys into out of playing this, but as I say all these things, I don't think Xenogears is a fun game to play, but I think it's a great game to experience. If it was a book, I'd read it, I'd watch the movie, I'd watch a Let's Play, but I don't think it's a fun video game to play. Alright everybody, I appreciate y'all hanging out, I appreciate you listening to this review, listening to my thoughts on Xenogears. This one ran a little longer than my typical reviews usually go, but I feel like there's a lot to talk about with this game, 
and I didn't want to leave anything out or leave any thoughts out. I wanted to make sure you I, that I conveyed everything I wanted to in this review. And like I said, I personally don't think this game is fun anymore, but I do think it's one of the best stories in JRPGs. And whether you experience it by playing the game or experience it by watching someone else play the game, it's something that you need to do at least once. All right, everybody. Like I said, I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you hanging out. If you like the video, if you like the review, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't. I'd really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.